very severe, strong punishment. So of course Allah knows the answer is yes. So why is the question there? The question there is to catch you, to catch your attention, to stop you literally in your tracks as it does during the reading, and to get you to thinking. Because the importance of the answer I'm going to show you tonight, inshallah, is so important, is so important that it's so easily attainable, but if you miss it, you miss everything. You miss everything. And we've been missing this solution for so long, that's why we're here. Allah lays down in the next verse a three-part formula. A three-part formula of how to avoid a painful punishment. And within that formula, He gives us many more things. And it will become the answer to this God. But this formula is so beautiful, so pristinely beautiful, that number one, it only has three parts. Number one, it only has three parts. Secondly, Allah has already given as a default that if you are Muslim, which that is who he is addressing, Ya Amanu, that you already have the first two parts of the formula as a default, just because you're a Muslim. The third one is the tablets which we are missing. And I like to break this formula into two parts. If you go to any pharmacy and you pull a prescription off the shelf of medicine, and you flip the medicine over and look at the ingredients. The ingredients are usually in two categories, correct? You have active ingredients and you have inactive ingredients. And usually there's a lot of inactives. Um, and then there will be one or two or maybe three of the most active ingredients. And the inactives are basically a lot of clumping compounds and agents that make it uh, accessible for you to take the active ingredients other than intravenously, which is the only way you can take them. So it makes, you po it makes it possible for the actives to work in this type of setting. Mm -hmm. And then you have the actives which are actually really what you need in order to gain some remedy or benefit from the solution. And this formula is very similar. It has actives and inactives. And the first two are very inactive ingredients alone. By themselves, they're inactives. They only really manifest themselves in their most beautiful of forms when you add the active catalyst to the formula. Now what is the formula Allah gives us in ayat number 11 of Surah al -Sah? What is the first thing Allah tells us? The first thing, O oh, you who believe, can I guide you to a transaction or a commodity which will prevent me from having to punish you painfully? Yes. Okay. Believe in Allah. Believe in Allah. How many of you here believe in Allah? How many of you here believe in the creator of all things? that to you as a default. What's the second one? And in his messenger. You believe in Allah and in his messenger. How many of you believe in the messenger of The default given as a Muslim. Allah gave you the first two as a default. But these are, if you separate them and put them alone, they are inactive. They are inactive, they are intangible. You don't see human, you don't see uh, uh, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. It's an inactive intangible alone. If it's not put with anything else, it is alone. As Imam Hassan al Basra rahimahullah, the Imam al Jadain, he once stated as means that Iman is not the substance of your hopes and your desires. That's not Iman, just what you wish and what you hope for and what you believe in. That's not Iman. He said, real Iman is that which settles itself upon your heart and then it becomes manifest through your actions. That is the Iman. Iman causes one to act. It is a catalyst for one to act. So if there is Iman with no action, then it is inactive. It's not doing you any good. So what is the active ingredient of the key catalyst for this formula that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives? وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِسَبِلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنْفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُونَكُمْ Allah says, you believe in me and my messenger, and now you get to work. You get to work. You struggle. You strive. You work hard. You sacrifice. And you be willing to do whatever it is that I ask you to do. And you struggle and work hard for what? 
Do we work hard for that paycheck at the end of the week or the month? Is there any paychecks mentioned in this verse? No paychecks, right? I don't see any paychecks here. What about that beautiful house you have? Or flat? Any flats or houses mentioned in this verse? What about that nice car? I don't see any cars here. Words I got not here all the whatever word you might use. There is nothing in that here. What about your wife and your family and your children? Any of that mentioned here? No. What does Allah want us to strive and work hard for? For him. For him. For me. Allah says, strive and struggle and work hard for me. Take that iman that you have and put it to work. Use it. Use it for me. And for my sake and my cause. With what though? Okay, with what you want us to work a lot, but what do you want? What do you want from us? Okay, I'm ready, let's go. What do you want? The amwalikum. Allah is saying, those possessions that I have given you in this life. That sustenance that I have given you in this life. That beautiful paycheck at the end of the week in the month. That nice home, that nice car, all of those gifts that I have given you in this life. That are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, loan them back to me. Loan them back to me. He doesn't even want us to give them to him. Because Allah has already told us that anything you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a loan. It is a loan that Allah returns to you, manifests, and many folds over. So Allah is saying, that which I gave you as a gift, just loan it back to me and I'll give it back to you again. SubhanAllah. I mean, where, where, where is the loss in this deal? So Allah wants what He has given you to give it back to Him. And then He says, I want your greatest commodity. I want the greatest commodity I gave you in this life. <coughs> and yourself. That health which I have given you, the health and the life which I have given you, use it for me. As our Rasul وسلم, says, use five before five. One of them being life. Use life for Allah before death. Your health, use for Allah before sickness. That youth that Allah gave you, that youth and that strength, Use it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before old age and weakness comes to you. That wealth that I gave you, use it before poorness. That knowledge which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has benefited you from, has benefited you with, and given you, Allah says, use it to forward me and my cause. And what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's cause? That I sent my messenger in the religion of truth to make it prevalent over every other way of life. This is what Allah is asking us to help get involved in. To get involved, to work for it. This is unfortunate that this is what we have missed for so long, is the effort and the work that comes in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us for sincere effort and work for Him. And unfortunately our exercise and effort and work has become predominantly for this life. All of our striving and struggling and stresses and, and, and anxieties are coming from this life. From this life. We work ourselves to death for this. For this. When this is going to do us no good. No good. And this is how we kill ourselves. And our work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has become merely out of this has become merely from, from this. From shafatayn, from our lips. That's it. And Allah is very clearly asking us in the very beginning of the surah, why do you say that which you do not do? Most hateful is it with Allah that you say that which you do not do. Oh yeah, <coughs> I believe in Allah. Wa Rasulihi. Allah says, I hear you, but I don't see you. I hear it, but I don't see it. Because when we look at the life of the best human being to ever walk the face of this earth, the best of Allah's creation, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his life, was it a life of words or was it a life of action? It was a life of action with words only when necessary, only beneficial speech, but most of it was action. If you go and get from me any of the authentic narrations of the Prophet them, how many of them are you going to find that are more than half a page? Or a page long? Very few. Very few. 95% of the uh, hadith from the Messenger of Allah's mouth are very short, sweet, and simple. But when we look at the narrations of the companions of 
about his actions. There are a lot. His actions were great and many and plentiful. He had a, 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 a life that was a life full of good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 